Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a flame test to test for different metal ions, different cations. So I've got some example metal ions here, and I'm going to test them to see what colour they turn a Bunsen flame to help me try and identify what metals they are. Now there's a specific procedure for that which I need to follow. For each of my unknown metal ions, I've got a nichrome wire, which I first need to clean to make sure there are no residual chemicals from a previous experiment on them. So I'm going to dip it in hydrochloric acid, and then I'm going to run it through the blue front of Bunsen flame to ensure that there is no residue there from another experiment. I can then dip the wire into my hydrochloric acid and then into my metal salt to get a test sample onto the wire. And then place it in the hottest part of the flame, the triangle, just there. You can see we're getting a kind of lilac colour from this metal salt. Now with a lilac colour, I know that I've got potassium. Now I'm going to repeat that process, but this time for my second unknown metal ion. So with a separate wire, I'm going to make sure it's clean. Placing it back in hydrochloric acid and then into my second sample. I can see that this one gives a bluish green turquoise flame and I know that to be a copper compound. Isn't that beautiful? Let's do it again. The reason we see different colours is that each atom, when its electrons excite and then de-excite, releases light as a different wavelength, and the different wavelengths correspond to different colours. And by the way, if you'd like to learn more about that, then I have done a separate video on the excitation and de-excitation of electrons and ionisation. Let's move to our third sample, cleaning the separate nichrome wire. my third sample. And we can see this brilliant yellow flame given off. This tells me that the metal ion that I've got must be sodium, or is very likely to be sodium. This is the same colour that you see in old style street lights because they contain sodium as well. stare at this all day. It's really important that when you finish you make sure you properly clean the wire so that there's no residue on and so therefore ready for the next person. It's also important that you don't cross contaminate so you don't dip the, your wire into one and then the other otherwise you'll just get a confusing array of colours and you won't be able to determine which metal iron you have. In fact, this technique only works if you have just one metal iron in your sample each time. 
that just about wraps this up. See you soon. I've got three examples here that I'm going to test and then compare them to known colours depending on the different... I've, that was rubbish. Starting that again.